new things actually, uh, new te technological um, elements I've been bringing into my skills courses and my coaching and my group work uh, is a video camera so that I can provide uh, feedback, a visual feedback for my athletes to improve some of their techniques. I also, um, uh, with some of the ways I uh, communicate uh, with my athletes, whether that's um, via Skype, because sometimes we can't be in the same place at the same time, I still have that video feedback and with face-to-face -face communication. Um, with the way uh, the training programs are synced, we don't have to email um, information back and forth, it's all synced in one place, so as I update it, it's directly updated on their computer, it's all in one place, so all of that stuff is so time efficient, there's no mistakes made, everything is all in the one place and ready to go. Um, and yeah, I don't time too often, but when I do, um, I always have, always have my, my phone handy to, to do the lap times and the splits and I uh, have lots of different programs on the computer as well that help to um, collate those times and work out improvements and percentage improvements and all those sorts of things. Technology certainly has its place. You need to be careful that you don't overuse it and you need to be careful how you do use it. So videoing is obviously a very important uh, aspect to use and it's important then when you do have video or performance that you look at it in a few ways. The most important thing is that you do look at it first of all I find in normal motion or normal speed uh, because what can happen is if you actually look at it too much in slow motion you can find faults that really aren't there. Uh, in slow motion you're looking at a, at a portion in time and it could look as if something's incorrect but if you then re uh, well if you look at it again in normal motion you'll find that there's actually not a fault there so that's something to, to look at when you're actually using video we tend to look at video and we take times take it at times during the season to look at obviously how the technique is progressing and also to identify faults but a good coach needs to develop a good eye and if you're at a competition you're generally not videoing to look at that at that particular point in time. You need to give feedback to the athlete immediately, so therefore you don't have time to sit down and review a performance on, on video. So mainly the technology we're using is video, and there's a number of good programs that you can use to obviously look at perhaps angles of uh, positioning of the legs and those types of things, or what the arms are doing. And we look at also using it from a number of different angles so that we're getting different perspectives to look at the technique from there. We obviously have a lot of equipment that we use and one of the things is that we are always investigating different bits and pieces of equipment that we can use to try and get a feel for or try and replicate the event as much as possible. Obviously the only thing that replicates the event as much as possible is the event itself. So you need to try and find things sometimes where you can actually slow the event down or slow the movement down and try and make the, the arm path or the leg movement absolutely perfect, but in a slower environment. Um, but we're always, we're using a lot of varied equipment, not just the throwing implements to get a result. We do some video analysis with our older students, so um, students in year six really, where um, we want to give immediate feedback, so we have it on a loop and they can see their feedback on standing long jump and throwing technique especially. Very, very effective because they can't feel it often, but as soon as they see that feedback, um, they adjust their technique accordingly and often achieve much better results.